Hello everyone and welcome to our 7.5 B notes on properties of trapezoids and isosceles trapezoids. So we're going to be doing some activities in class with the desks and with modeling and with GeoGebra to discover these properties first. And so this is just um, formally taking the notes on those properties after we have discovered them. So what is a trapezoid? We talked about in class how a trapezoid by definition is going to be a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure with exactly one pair and it says exactly, so not more than one, but exactly one pair of parallel sides. So a parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of opposite sides parallel. A kite has no opposite sides parallel or no sides parallel in general, but a trapezoid is gonna have exactly one pair. And so in my picture, um, the one pair of parallel sides is going to be TR is parallel to PA. So let's go ahead and write that in. Those are called the bases, TR, is going to be parallel to PA. And in class, we're gonna um, talk about isosceles triangles and how there's a lot of similarities between isosceles triangles and isosceles trapezoids, okay? So there's gonna be parallel to each other, not necessarily the same in length. In fact, one is gonna be longer than the other. Um, and those are gonna be parallel to each other, meaning that they never ever cross. And we're gonna call those sides the bases. So I'm gonna call this like base one, and I'm gonna call this base two. You can label them either way. I could flip-flop that if I want, but I have two bases. So the B stands for the bases. Those are gonna be parallel to each other. Okay, um, we're gonna call the other pieces. We're gonna come back to this in a second, but the other pieces are gonna be the legs. So in this example, TP is a shorter leg than this leg. The uh, purple one is a little bit longer, okay? So we'll talk about what it's called when those legs are congruent. So we've got the bases so far. Um, the other property of a trapezoid is that the same side interior angles are supplementary. So again, if you think back to class, why does that make sense? Well, if these lines are parallel, so I'm going to extend them just a little bit just so you can see this. If these lines are parallel and this is my transversal TP, then what kind of angles would be angle T and angle P? Angle T and angle P are going to be same side interior angles. And what do we know that same side interior angles add up to? 180 degrees on parallel lines. So those would be same side interior. And then using this different leg, so this longer leg in red, I also have same side interior angles sitting um, next to that transversal. So I might mark this one with three to show that it's different. This angle with three, and then this angle with four arcs, those are also gonna have a sum of 180 degrees. So if we wrote that out, I would write, for example, that angle T plus angle P are gonna add up to 180. I know that immediately. I also know that the other angles around the red leg, angle R plus angle A, are also gonna have a sum of 180 degrees. So I'm able to do that for both of those sets of same side interior angles. Okay, so we talked about this in class, and then we talked about an isosceles trapezoid and all of its parts, but remember that an isosceles triangle has, has congruent legs. An isosceles trapezoid is gonna be a quadrilateral, so again, a four-sided figure, a four-sided figure, with exactly one pair of parallel sides. Okay, so that's the same, that's the same definition so far. So it's gonna have all of the same properties from before as a trapezoid, but it's gonna have four additional properties that just a plain trapezoid would not have. So it's kind of like saying, you know, I've got the broad group of dogs, but then I have Australian shepherds or types of dogs. I have the broad group of trapezoids. Isosceles trapezoids are specific types of trapezoids. So let's mark all of these properties in this picture. The most important and the easiest part to mark is that in an isosceles triangle, the legs are congruent. In an isosceles trapezoid, the legs are also congruent. So remember we said we have our bases. Our bases are the parallel sides, okay? The legs are gonna be congruent, marked the exact same length and an isosceles trapezoid. So we would put that in the, um, in the definition, giving myself an example by saying that T to P, that leg, is gonna be congruent to R to A. So that's in my picture, the legs are congruent. So what else happens when it's an isosceles trapezoid? We also know that the base angles are congruent. So instead of marking it with one arc, two arcs, three arcs, and then four arcs, the angles that sit on the same base are gonna be congruent. So let's name those. Angle P is going to be congruent to angle A. So I'm gonna write that over here. Those are base angles because they sit on the same base. So angle P is congruent to angle A. And I'm also going to know, I'm gonna do this in another color, that angle T is going to be congruent to angle R. Those sit on the same base, those sit on the top base. So angle T is congruent to angle R. 
So those are our base angles and those are gonna be congruent. They're still supplementary. A green plus a yellow is going to be 180 and the other green plus the other yellow is gonna be 180. We just, instead of having four different values here, if it's an isosceles trapezoid, have two pairs that are congruent. So the two greens, the two yellows. Um, we also know that the diagonals are going to be congruent to each other. So the diagonal is from R all the way to P. There's one diagonal. So RP, that one diagonal, is going to be congruent to the other diagonal. Remember, in a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent. In an isosceles trapezoid, the, the diagonals are congruent. So it's going to be congruent to TA. Which you can tell, you can tell that this is symmetric, and so those diagonals should be congruent. From T to A should be the same distance as from R to P. Um, something I did want to note, we could add this. This little piece, one, two, three, is going to be congruent to this little piece, one, two, three. And then this bigger piece, one, two, three, four, is going to be congruent to this piece, one, two, three, four. Okay? So those do not cut each other in half, but it does create isosceles triangles within this shape. Okay? At the top and at the bottom of this trapezoid. So like number one and number two would be isosceles trapezoids. All right, um, the other thing is that because we have base angles that are congruent, we said a green and a yellow would add up to 180, those same side interior angles. We also know that the opposite angles are gonna be supplementary. So because I know that these add up to 180, yellow plus green adds up to 180 degrees. We already know that by the definition of a trapezoid. I also know that I can take R and P, because that's a green and a yellow, and add those up to 180. I can also add T and A up to 180 as well. So that is just a property of it being an isosceles trapezoid, I'm able to not just add R and A up to 180, but T and A add up to 180, and then P and R add up to 180 as well. So I'm just going to give myself an example of that. I would just say like a green angle, angle T, plus um, the other angle, the yellow, angle A, those are opposite to each other. Those have a sum of 180 degrees. So that is the properties of an isosceles trapezoid. The other thing we discovered in class, we talked about the triangle mid-segment theorem. We reminded each other of what that meant. And then we talked about how similar it was to the trapezoid mid-segment theorem. Uh, this sounds fancy, but here's what it says. The mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to each base, so it's facing the same way as each base. You can tell in this picture that X to Y is parallel to both of these, B to C and A to D. And its length is half of the sum of the lengths of its bases. Okay? half of the sum of the lengths of its bases, meaning if I add together my two bases, that yellow and that yellow base, I'm gonna call that B1 and B2. Here's base one, base two. If I wanna find the mid-segment of this trapezoid, it's going to be an average of these two. So here's my mid-segment in, in um, pink. So it says which one is the mid-segment? That would be segment XY in pink and then it's going to be between the bases, it is going to be the average of those bases. So here's a way to say that. If you do base one plus base two, and you divide that by two, that is going to give me the length of the mid-segment. So this is much easier when you're given actual numbers. So let me give you an example. If I tell you that this one right here is, I don't know, 10 units long, and that this one is 20, my mid-segment is gonna be the average of those two, which is gonna be 15 units long. So it's gonna be the middle. 10 plus 20 is 30, 30 divided by two is 15, okay? It's really easy to do it if I just have even easier numbers like six and eight. What's the middle of six and eight? Immediately it's seven, but you could do the math. Six plus eight is 14, 14 divided by two is seven. Where it gets a little bit harder is when you have algebra, like algebraic expressions. So another way to write this and to write this a little bit more um, similar to what we did um, when we did the triangle mid-segment theorem is to put the two on the other side. So base one plus base two, those two bases add together, is gonna to be equal to two times the mid-segment. So all we're doing on that one is multiplying both sides by two. So we'll look at an example of why that might be a little bit easier. If you double the mid-segment, if you put two pinks next to each other, it'll be equal to the, um, the two yellows added together, the top base and the bottom base. So just two different way, ways to write the same formula. And I did want to mention that mid-segment is going to be parallel to those bases. So not only is it happening at the midpoints of those legs, it is also going to be parallel to the base that's on the top and to the base that's on the bottom. All right, so the first thing I want you to do on each of these, we're solving for the indicated values, is ask yourself, is it an isosceles trapezoid or is it not an isosceles trapezoid? So here are my parallel lines. Those are my bases. Here are my legs. My legs are marked as congruent. If my legs are congruent, then my base angles are going to be congruent. So if this is 45, who is also 45, we're going to know that angle 3 is 45 degrees. 
So angle three is 45 degrees because those base angles are congruent. They sit on the same yellow base on the bottom. Who else are my base angles sitting on the base that's on the top? That is going to be one and two. So how do I find either of those? Well, I know because it's a trapezoid that these two angles sitting on the same leg, those same side interior angles should have a sum of 180. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do 180 minus 45. And what do I get? I get 135 degrees for angle one. If angle one is 135 degrees, then angle two is also gonna be 135 degrees. Since it's isosceles um, trapezoid, those angles are gonna be congruent, so I'm gonna mark it with two and two. So two is 135 and one is 135. All right, here are my bases. This is a trapezoid, one pair of parallel sides, and we've got our isosceles trapezoid markings. So it is a isosceles trapezoid. How do I figure out what um, M is? Well, 2M and 48 should have a sum of 180 since it is a trapezoid. So even if it wasn't isosceles, I could still do this math. 2M plus 48 equals 180. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 180 and we're gonna subtract 48. I'm gonna get 132. And then to get M by itself, we're gonna divide by two on each side. And I get M as a value of 66. So M is 66. How do I find N? Well, N is an angle that is sitting on the base that's on the bottom. Maybe I could call that base two. 48 is also sitting on base two. So those are going to be congruent base angles. So I can take 5n plus 3, and I can set it equal to 48. So we subtract 3 from both sides, we get 45. And then whenever you do 45, and you divide that by 5, we're going to get 9. So n has a value of 9. All right, now we've got an isosceles trapezoid turned sideways. How do I know it's isosceles? Well, here are my parallel sides. Here are my congruent legs. So it is isosceles. It says that from T to V, so that's one of my diagonals, T to V is 2X minus 1, and then U to S is also X plus 2. What do we know about those two diagonals? Because it's an isosceles trapezoid, we know that the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent, so I can take 2X minus 1 and I can set it equal to X plus 2. And so we're going to get our variables on the same side. X minus 1 is equal to 2. And we're going to add 1 to both sides and get X is equal to 3. So if x is equal to 3, how do I find what u to s is actually? Well, u to s is the expression x plus 2. So what is 3 plus 2? That's going to give me 5. So the other diagonal should be 5 as well. Let's plug that in and see. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 1 is also 5. So I know that I have done some good math there. All right, this is our first trapezoid so far as a problem that has been given that is not isosceles. How do I immediately know it's not isosceles? Number one, we do not have the congruent legs marked. Um, and then number two, you can see that whenever I look at this, I can tell that one leg is longer than the other. And even if I couldn't, I'll be able to confirm that in a second. I can find angle, um, I know that angle J and angle M are gonna have a sum of 180 still. Because it's a trapezoid, these have a sum of 180 degrees. So how do I find angle M? I'm gonna do 180 minus 87, which of course gives me 93 degrees. So angle M is 93 degrees. Okay, if angle L is, so we know it's, uh, actually from here, we know that it is not going to be an isosceles trapezoid because this is 93 and then this angle is 51. So we know that the legs are not congruent in this shape. So if L is 51, how do I find K? I know that those two should also have a sum of 180. So I'm gonna do 180 minus 51 is 129 degrees. So an easy way to confirm that you did this right, this is a quadrilateral, so add all of those up. If this is 129, add all four of those interior angles up and make sure that it has a sum of uh, 360. But since both of those add up to 180, we know we'd have a sum of 360. So 87 plus 93 plus 129 plus 51, and that does have a sum of 360 degrees. So you can see on this problem, all four of these interior angles in this trapezoid were different, so the legs were not congruent. All right, on this next problem, here's our trapezoid. P to Q is parallel to S to R. So what can I do with these two angles, this blue one at Q and then this pink one at R? I know that those are sitting on different bases, but they are sitting on the same side interior of the same transversal. So they should have a sum of 180 degrees. So I'm gonna do 12X plus three plus seven X minus 
13 is equal to 180, since those are supplementary. So I'm going to combine my like terms, 17x and, um, or 12x and 7x is going to be 19x, and then 3 minus 13 is going to give me negative 10. That's equal to 180. So 19x equals 190. I divide both sides by 19, and what I'm going to get is 10. X is 10. So how do we go back and find angle Q? Well, now that I know X is 10, I'm going to plug it in. 12 times 10 is going to be 120. And we, what we want to do to that is we want to add 3 to that. So that's going to be 123 is angle Q. If you wanted to make sure you did it right, you could just plug in 10 to the pink angle and make sure that you get the supplement of that. So you'd get 70 minus 13. 70 minus 13 is 57, which is in fact the supplement of 123. So even though it didn't ask me for angle R, sometimes it's a smart choice to go ahead and pause and solve for that just to make sure that you did plug it in correctly. Okay, this next picture, they do not have markings on the legs, but they do tell me from the beginning that MNOP is an isosceles trapezoid, so I get to add the tick marks at MP and NO. Those legs are going to be congruent. So this is an isosceles trapezoid, and they tell me that from M to P is 16X minus 13. There's M to P, that's M. I'm gonna color code that in green, actually. M to P is 6X, 16X minus 13. So I'm gonna put that in the picture. That's this leg right here. We're given that N to O is 9X plus 8. So that's that green leg right there. We know that since this is isosceles, those should be congruent. So what do I do to solve for X? I'm gonna set 16X minus 13 equal to 9X plus 8. So I'm gonna get my variables on the same side. I've got 7X equals 21. So X is gonna have a value of three. Okay. They also tell me that P to N is five Y plus 19. That's a full diagonal in this isosceles uh, trapezoid. M to O is 12 Y minus 37. That's a full diagonal in this isosceles trapezoid. What do we know about the diagonals in an isosceles trapezoid? They are gonna be congruent to each other. So I can set five Y plus 19 equal to 12y minus 37. I'm gonna get my variables on the same side. I'm gonna move that 37 to the other side, so it's gonna be 37 plus 19. That gives me 56. Then I'm gonna do 56 divided by seven. What do I get for y? y is eight. So how do I actually find mp? It wants to know what is mp. Here's my expression for mp. So drop in a three right here. It's gonna be 16 times three minus 13. That gives me 35 for one of the legs, actually both of the legs of the shape. And then MO, it wants to know what is the actual diagonal. Let's drop in whatever Y was, which was 8. So that's going to be 12 times 8, and then minus 37. So I have a total of 59 for both diagonals. And if you wanted to make sure you did it right, you could also plug it in here. So 5 times 8, um, and that'd be plus 19. That also gives me a diagonal of length 59. So I know that I did that right. Okay, the last two are triangle mid-segment problems. So um, I use different formulas based on what is given. Y'all are so used to finding averages of test and things like that, that if I told you one of these bases, so I'm gonna call this base one, if I told you base one was 14, and I told you that uh, base two D to C is 26, if this is a triangle mid-segment, that is going to be the middle of those two lengths. You can tell we've got a small, a medium, and a large. So y'all are so used to finding averages that many of you would like to do this. 14 plus 26 divided by 2 is going to give you my mid-segment. So what is the middle of 14 and 26? Y'all are so used to doing this, it's going to be 20. So I, that's what I would do for this problem. If it's, just, if it's just whole numbers, if there are just numbers on these bases, it's easy to add them together and divide by 2, and that number should be in the middle. You can tell it's in the middle because 20 is 6 away from 14 and also 6 away from 26. Okay, let's do that again. Now these are numbers, so watch this one. This one's interesting. E to F, it gives me my mid-segment value. My mid-segment value on here is going to be 22, so it gives me the middle. It tells me D to C, that base 2, that second base, is 38. So how do we find base 1? Multiple ways you could do this. But using the same thinking I just did, how far is 22 away from 38? What is 38 minus 22? 16. So I'm just going to go 16 in the other direction. So plus 16 and then minus 16. What is 22 minus 16? That is going to give me 6 for the other base. So A to B is going to be 6. If you weren't sure what to do on this problem, you could always do our formula and go 2 times the mid-segment is equal to base 1 plus base 2. So you'd go 2 times 22 
equals our base one we didn't know. We call this one base one, and this one base two. You'd say x um, plus six, and so you'd get 44 equals, did I type that in right? Oh, I'm sorry, x plus 38, here we go, x plus 38. My base two was 38, x plus 38. So you get 44 equals x plus 38. You subtract 38 from both sides, and you end up getting x is six. So if you need to use this formula instead, you absolutely can. If you struggle with finding, if you, you're given the middle. Um, and then this, this last problem as well with all this algebra, it is a little bit easier um, typically for students to do two times the mid-segment equals the bases added together. Base one plus base two. Okay, so base one, base two. Here is my mid-segment. So I'm just going to plug that stuff in. 2 times the pink thing, which is going to be 2x plus 10, put it in parentheses, is equal to my bases added together. So that would be 6x minus 12 plus 18. So we're going to use some distributive property here. That would be 4x plus 20 equals, um, let's combine some like terms, 6x plus 6, I believe. We're going to get our variables on the same side. And then we're going to move the 6 to the other side by sub, uh, subtracting. So x should have a value of 7. Let's go plug that in and make sure it makes sense. Um, 6 times 7 is 42, minus 12 is equal to 30. I'm going to plug that in. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 10 is 24. So this is equal to 24. Um, is 24, in fact, in the middle of 18 and 30? If you didn't know that for sure, you just average them, which means add them together and divide it by 2. So 30 plus 18 is 48. 48 divided by 2 is 24. So I know that I did that one correctly. So your assignment is going to be on the back. Your assignment is going to be the problems on the back. These trapezoid problems, some of them are isosceles, and then some of them are not. And then you've got some mid-segment practice as well. So those 11 problems are your homework, and we will check those tomorrow. Hope you're having a great day.